Reports surfaced earlier this season about the Cowboys wanting to give Greg Hardy an extension. Jerry Jones has now backed off those comments regarding extension talk. Skip, what do you make of this? Gee, that's a little progress on Jerry Jones' part. Stephen A., it's not enough, obviously. I, I'm going to make this statement once again. I honestly believe my Dallas Cowboys would have a better chance of getting on a late season roll and winning the extremely winnable NFC East if Greg Hardy had been cut a week ago or two weeks ago or four weeks ago or never signed in the first place. I believe that Jerry Jones could have reunited this team by dismissing Greg Hardy. It's been one incident after another culminating last Thursday. There were several media reports that Greg Hardy was late to meetings at their Valley Ranch headquarters. Jerry Jones has publicly discounted that by saying, well, gee, players are occasionally late to meetings. This is Greg Hardy we're talking about. I thought he was on zero tolerance. And then we had that first interview, ill-fated as it was, that he gave. Then we had the special teams huddle during the Giants game. Then we had two different Twitter posts proclaiming his innocence that were just completely out of bounds. One thing after another with the culmination maybe the, the last straw that you were late to meetings last Thursday ahead of the Tampa Bay game, which became your seventh straight loss. Greg Hardy is now 0-5 as a Dallas Cowboy. He has not mattered to this football team. I'll do it from a football perspective. I haven't seen the productivity that I expected from him, so he's become far, far more trouble than he was ever worth in the first place. I wish Jerry had cut him, but at least he's come somewhat around to Gee, maybe we ought to revisit this idea of extending him. <clears throat> Greg Hardy is a distraction and a negative to everybody because of the baggage that he joined the Cowboys with. That's it. It's that simple. Let's stop beating around a bush and trying to make things out of nothing. What something is the fact that he had that domestic violence conviction that was overturned on appeal. That's what happened. Because if it wasn't for that, what are we talking about here? We're talking about a guy that got into an argument on the sideline. Yep. That's it. I mean, the Dallas Cowboys have 16 sacks on the season. Gray Hardy's only played five games and he's their leading sacker with four. Nobody else on the team has more than three. He's their leading sack guy, okay? So what I'm saying is I am not absolving him by any stretch of the imagination. I can respect the fact that you, certainly you and anybody else would think that he's a distraction. I felt that way as well. My point to you is this. If we're going to sit there and look at him as a problem, let's not try to act like he's been a problem because of what happened in the last five weeks that he's been with the squad. No. His baggage that he brought with him is the problem. And that's exacerbated the situation because this dude it could make news for, for walking over to get some water from the water fountain instead of sprinting. That's how bad things are with Greg Hardy right now. That's what this is about. This ain't about anything else. This man right here, to me, even though I was on the record saying I was a, if I were the Dallas Cowboys, I didn't mind taking him. Here was my belief. Ten game suspension. After that, there's no risk whatsoever. He's one of the elite sackers in the mm -hmm. game, considered the biggest free agent out there outside of Indomitian and Sue, mm -hmm. and he's on a week-to-week -week basis with a no-tolerance policy. Yep. You have nothing to lose and potentially everything to gain. Mm -hmm. And he's going to serve the 10-game suspension, so so be it. But it was after that that it got reduced to four games. It was after that, and once mm -hmm. he came in and was playing, that we saw the pictures. It was after that that we saw him going off on the sidelines and slapping down the coach's clipboard and all of that other stuff. But in the end, what this comes down to is because of the whole domestic violence issue, everything else is blown up. And I'm saying to you, that's why, if you want to say he's gone, just say that. Because from a football perspective, the football issues to me are not that big of a deal. The other stuff is a very big deal. The football stuff, oh, you got in the huddle. Oh, you slapped down a clipboard. No, Stephen oh, just, A., it's how he, handled, he, how he handled all the off-the-field situation, the domestic violence, the no lack of contrition, how he acted, how with the posts and this, he's making it worse. So it's not just that act. Then he didn't handle himself properly. That's so not, that's what we're talking about. No, what I'm talking about. He's not being a professional. No, what I'm talking about is this. All of that 
mm -hmm. is what I'm talking about with the domestic violence. Yeah. When I say the domestic violence, I'm talking about But if he handled it properly when he came back and showed remorse and acted professional like a patriot would, no, then what, I think it'd be a different story. What I'm saying is this. Let me be very, very clear mm -hmm. because obviously this is a dicey subject, so mm -hmm. let's be clear mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. what we're saying. Yeah. What I'm saying is everything associated with his domestic mm -hmm. violence issue mm -hmm. is the issue. If you take all of that away, then nobody's thinking about how he's acting on the football field. That's all I'm saying. Of course, when you say the level of contrition that he yeah. has lacked showing, yeah. that to me is jumped in yeah. with the domestic violence issue. He's made it worse issue. is what I'm trying to say, but, but, but yes, but, the football's but been But what on I'm point. saying to you is that the domestic violence charge, the conviction and then it getting overturned on appeal, okay, because it went from a bench trial to the jury trial and it got dropped, mm -hmm. combined with him coming on and not showing the appropriate level of contrition, mm -hmm. to me, that's all in one cup. Mm -hmm. When I say domestic violence, I'm talking about all of that. The football stuff is, oh, he jumped into the huddle. He slapped down the clipboard. He had to be, you know, controlled by Des Bryant and them from arguing. I am saying without the domestic violence stuff, those issues are not big enough for us to be talking about the sack leader being gone. So let's stop okay. dancing around the issue and just call it what it is. He came back from the whole domestic violence charges. He didn't show the appropriate level of contrition, and we don't believe he should be playing, mm -hmm. especially after seeing those pictures. We don't believe he deserves to be playing. Let's stop okay, talking. It was dicey to sign him in the first place, right, right? Right, So what I'm saying is, that's the issue. Mm -hmm. Let's stop acting like, oh my goodness, over the last few weeks, we're seeing things on the football field from him that's so problematic that he doesn't need to be on the football team. No, he doesn't need to be on the football team because the baggage that he had coming into he has done nothing to minimize that that's the issue it's all it is uh, okay but that's all it is uh, okay let's say he had no background of domestic violence mm -hmm. and they had signed him right and then he has the the incident in the huddle where he just loses right. it and, and breaks up and, and, and you said the next day that man's crazy right you know right. Like he looks but, crazy but, to me but he's right? cra but he's but he looks crazy to me because i know about the background okay without the background i would have just went like this oh man he lost his temper on the All football right. field yeah. that's my point the, the, if you got those issues and you know you have those issues as a backdrop and everybody is looking at you differently because of those judgment. issues and then you go on the field and do that that exacerbates the situation and that's all i'm trying to say so i'm saying this is the bot this is the bottom line for me skip bayless your cowboy loving self would not be talking about getting rid of greg hardy if he didn't have that history those incidences on the football field wouldn't be enough for you to say let go of the sack leader Although I that's where i'm going before he was signed i said no, no, no i agree okay, with you right. i agree with you i'm saying without those issues mm -hmm. if it were just he got into the huddle slapped the clipboard had to be restrained by des bryant and other players you would not be saying get rid of the sack leader for your dallas cowboys okay. it's because that's where i'm going all right but finally i had to give into it we sure, talked about are sure. you rooting for the cowboys sure. or greg hardy i just sure. root for the cowboys sure. so if he had come in on zero tolerance right and he had been seen on sundays but not heard from a peep through the week right i'd say okay okay I guess, that's right i guess he's rehabilitating right. himself right. i guess he is what jerry said they said we have programs in place charlotte jones the daughter said we have programs in place to help him out right i i, I don't know if he's participating because it sure doesn't look like it to me right. after a while more trouble than worth but, i i don't know what the leaders of this team think right. but i'm gonna guess this is just a guess mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think they would be relieved if he were out of their life and room. i guess what i'm saying to you is that jerry jones doesn't get to hide behind greg hardy to disguise his own flaws a lot of things have happened because jerry jones has fostered an environment that says i will do anything that i can to create a buzz generate money and 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 trying to win okay. along the way so whether whatever whatever cast of characters he may have to add people that were producing and kept them out listen DeMarco Murray came on the show last year. I said he should work for the CIA. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't say anything. Yep. But he went out there and had 392 carries. He had 449 touches. He said nothing, just went on the field, did his job, and as a result, it helped insulate Tony Romo yep. to some degree because Tony Romo wasn't subjected to the same level of punishment he would have otherwise been subjected to. And Jerry Jones still got away from, got, let him go to save a few bucks, All okay? Right. But then you go out there and you find the money to get Greg Hardy. So listen, you brought this on it, yourself. It wasn't much, but... Yeah, yeah, but you brought it on yourself. Yeah, okay, you I, got, on yourself. I got it. And finally, 
we have something I don't know much about, but there's this highly publicized welcome to Dallas party that mm. they're going to throw oh, on, is it after Thanksgiving on Close Friday, I guess? Thanksgiving, yeah. Right? Okay. For Greg Hardy, welcome to, Lord, have mercy. And that's being publicized? Hold See, if I'm Jerry Jones or Charlotte, I just say, no, we're not doing Shut that. Shut it down. No, sorry. Yeah, you absolutely. Yeah. I told, I told, yeah, you could say that, and I don't blame you. But but here's what I'm saying. Do you have a problem with the party or do you have a problem with something being publicized? Like if you were just having a house party, Greg Hardy is a free citizen. He's perfectly within his right to have a party, to go party, okay? okay? But, what, but, but what you can't do is in the, with the backdrop of all of this stuff, hey, life is beautiful. <laughs> oh, no. I'm about to throw down and have a party and let the world know. You yeah, see what I'm saying? But, but in B-Y-O-B. Dallas, in Dallas oh. that's where the exception lies. Skip. They're America's team, right? They're the ones everyone wants to come play for, right? They're the star in the helmet, the billion-dollar playpen. This is what comes with your Cowboys. Mm. Live with it. It comes with my owner, not my Cowboys. Oh, excuse me. Your owner is the Cowboys. <laughs> I guess so. All right. Yes, he is. Yeah. Let's stay in Texas, but how about we talk some college football, shall we? Could this be Charlie Strong's last 